Hi, I'm Terry with Heart of Peace Counseling, but also with the new YouTube coming on, which is Terry Talks Therapy and Trauma. This is my cohort who's going to be joining me for a while. Good evening. I'm Russ Butler. It's nice to be with you this evening. So tonight you're going to get a chance to get to know me, but you're also going to get a chance to get to know Russ because mm -hmm. he's going to join me with this. And he is somebody I want to bring along with my adventure as I move forward with this online part of technology and therapy. So let's just give us some time and let's get into this and enjoy me being a little cray cray. Yeah. <laughs> so Terry, let me kick this off and I'll just you ask you the it. first question is, so you specialize in trauma therapy. I do. And what, what got you to specifically focus on trauma therapy? Um, it actually goes back to my story of trauma. So mm -hmm. one of the things I want people to know about is um, I've been there. I've been mm -hmm. in the road. I, I've been in a place where I had to walk into the therapy office and actually sit there. And that was super hard. Um, but my trauma goes back to childhood sexual abuse. Um, it goes back to losing a husband. Um, I have a special needs son who um, struggles with ADHD, extreme ADHD and autism, which he has medication for and disability and things. And then I've also been through a really hard car accident where it was mm -hmm. completely an accident, mm -hmm. but a child passed. Um, oh. And when I went through that, I'd done talk therapy and nothing was working. And I finally was willing to try what was called EMDR. Mm -hmm. um, and as I discovered that and found that my talk therapy that I'd done as a child really didn't heal things, EMDR. Mm -hmm. and we'll talk more about EMDR coming yeah, down. Yeah, it's kind of a, a new therapy that I've heard of the last three or four years myself. I'm sure it's been around long. than that. In the 1980s, yeah. Um, yeah. 85 is what it was created. And um, it's really become the new, especially with the amount of trauma that we have within society. Mm -hmm. um, we go back to the riots that happened last year, COVID mm -hmm. and everything. There was just a lot of trauma mm -hmm. and there's been yeah. a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. I will say this about what I think in regards to what's wrong with our society. I think we have a lot of people with trauma walking around interacting and it's mm -hmm. not healed. Um, we mm -hmm. have a lot of unhealed people bleeding and affecting other people and we would really benefit by everybody getting into therapy. And yes, mm -hmm. I said that. I think everybody mm -hmm. should go to therapy, but not just any therapy. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll talk, we'll, let's go into that one. Yeah. So that brings up something. So I would agree with you that the last couple of years have just been hard on everybody. But COVID, riots, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the economy. Black Lives Matter, um, the economy. We, we seem to be more divided in our political views lately as a country. We're and, fighting over vaccinations. And, yeah, I mean, just the, the silliest things to fight over. And so what is the difference between having a true trauma and someone just having the the why poor me attitude? Are, are they different? Or, there is a difference. Yeah. One thing I want to say is... Um, you said silly things. I mm -hmm. think there are some generational things mm -hmm. where what we used to view as silly mm -hmm. really aren't silly anymore. Like, mm -hmm. I think sometimes I'm like, oh, we're fighting over vaccination. And to me, that yeah. seems so minute. Yeah. But I want to acknowledge that to some clients, that is a really strong thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's part of the division that's happening in things mm -hmm. is we have people who really feel strongly with certain things. And we have other people who are like, mm -hmm. eh. And again, yeah. it creates this division. Mm -hmm. But going back to the difference, um, there is environmental trauma which i mm -hmm. would put COVID into like COVID hit it was environmentally mm -hmm. and socially that happened and it was amongst that pandemic you know the yeah. pandemic hit and it really hit a lot of people well things really shut down really overnight i remember it was march 13th of 2020 <laughs> and you know the whole country was told to go home and shut up uh, yeah. shut down and and uh, um and some people shelter in place kind of thing is, yep. yeah that's what the word i was looking for sorry so, we're no, going, we're, we're, we have no script. Tonight. We're just going with it. So enjoy we're, us. This yeah, is us just, being true to us. We're just talking as friends would talk here tonight. Yes. Um, well, and going back to that. So we have those things that happen, but then you have things of like childhood traumas, like mm -hmm. being growing up in an abusive home or watching your parents um, fight. And mm -hmm. again, abuse mm -hmm. doesn't always have to be physical. It doesn't have to be me hitting you. It can yeah. be me saying, rest your Big, mm -hmm. like I can say some really mean and hurtful things yeah. that is emotional abuse. And I would, I would agree with you 100% on that because I think, and I think what we're finding out is 
emotional abuse is just as bad as the physical abuse. Yep. They used to have that saying for us who, you know, said these kids, sticks and stones will break my bones, mm -hmm. but words will never hurt me. I think mm -hmm. it's the biggest load of crap that was ever created <laughs> yeah. because your words can hurt more than mm -hmm. physical. And I'm yeah. not saying physical doesn't hurt you, yeah. but physically you can go get an arm, a broken arm mm -hmm. mended or surgery and things like that. Yeah. It'll still have aftermath, mm -hmm. but emotional, we carry it, we take it internally. Mm -hmm. You know, when you walk around and it, and it's not, the other part about it is it can be a passive aggressive way of getting it said. Yeah. Like, you're never going to do that. Or mm -hmm. you're like, I love my parents, but mm -hmm. my mom had a hard time when I was going to school because she worried about me. She worried mm -hmm. about me. Like I wasn't going to be okay. I was a kid who struggled. I will totally admit it. <laughs> I fell out of college five times. Yeah. I can show you my grades. I failed out. I mm -hmm. lost my husband. I went back to school mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I had above a 3.5 in all my things. I graduated mm -hmm. with my master's with a 3.74 wow. and those changes happen. And so mm -hmm. I get my mom's worry, but mm -hmm. my mom also was saying, you can't, you can't. Yeah. And in her way, she was trying to say, mm -hmm. she didn't want to protect me. She wanted to take care of me. But yeah. I took it with all my stuff in my history. Like, oh, mm -hmm. my mom doesn't believe in me. Yeah. And so I'd send these every semester, I'd get my grades in my master's program and, and I'd forward them on to my mom. Yeah. Um, and in truth, when I've healed my trauma, I've been able to look back at my mom and see my mom was trying to protect. She was doing the best she the could. Best she she could. would. Well, and we've talked about this a little bit as our parents came from a generation where we don't talk about how we feel. Yep. We suck it up and we go work on the farm all day. We don't <laughs> we, talk about our emotions. We don't talk about yeah. what's going on. Mm -hmm. The the sexual abuse within the family stays hidden in the closet. We don't mm -hmm. we don't talk about that stuff. And so yeah. I want you to hear and it please, um, for any of you who know my parents, I love my parents. My parents have been amazing. Me and my mom's relationship, I would say, has been the greatest change in my life. We really struggled. We struggled mm -hmm. a lot because of my trauma. We struggled a lot because of things that would happen. Mm -hmm. And as I healed, my greatest relationship that has improved is with my mom. And yeah. my mom will call me like, Terry, I haven't talked in a while because she misses me. Mm -hmm. um, my mom also has grown to understand why some of the choices that I do and why I do it. Um, and my mom has gotten to a place where um, she doesn't judge. Um, but when she... She's not perfect and not judging, but when she does it, I know it's out of care and concern. And so please know my mom is an mm -hmm. amazing person along with my dad. When I was in that car accident, um, I called my parents. Um, I was a mess. Mm -hmm. um, and what's crying isn't the car accident. What actually is getting me emotional is my parents got in the car and they were at my place the next day. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing when my husband passed. Um, I called, I told my parents I was on the way to the hospital, something had happened, my husband had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. My dad got the truck, he picked my mom up, and they were there. They were there within hours. I still think mm -hmm. my dad sped, and we've never talked about it, but I really believe <laughs> my dad sped. Yeah. I know it was when the Legacy Highway here in Utah had opened up, because oh, yeah. he, he called, mm -hmm. um, and they were there. Um, mm -hmm. We had a cat in the house, my mom's allergic to cats, my mom came in and helped, and mm -hmm. my parents were there. And so please, I want you to hear that, even though mm -hmm. I have a history of trauma, and I have a history mm -hmm. of hurts um my parents did amazing things and my parents are yeah. amazing and i love mm -hmm. them and i cannot say mm -hmm. enough good about them yeah. um so i want to say that but going back to also in regards to to life and answering kind of some of those questions is mm -hmm. my life experiences have brought me to the place i yeah i was going to ask you about that i mean you know bad things happen to all of us but um, I think, especially as you get older, I think you can realize that some of these experiences, for good or bad, have molded you into the person you are today. And like with Terry, it molded her into be a therapist that can really understand where her clients are coming from. I do. Um, I love being back in person. I do a lot to keep my office open. I use UV lights. I use sanitary sanitary wipes. I also have a UV light I run in between sessions and at the end of the day to keep my office close I keep six mm -hmm. feet of distance um but I love being in person because your body talks mm -hmm. and I when my clients come in to work with me in trauma their bodies communicate it might be a little foot rub by the way I love Costco but so their <laughs> fight their feet when they're processing might start moving um mm -hmm. their lip might might do they we all have different ways mm -hmm. in which our our unheard parts of our body come out mm -hmm. and in person I can see that one thing that you can't see is what's going on behind. And so I've had a hard time with online. I do it and I can, mm -hmm. but you only get this much yeah. of online. And there is mm -hmm. so much that the rest of the body. And so, mm -hmm. um, and this is where I'm going to make a plug for a great book. It's called The Body Keeps the Score. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Look it up on that title. All you have to do, there's even a workbook. There's a couple different workbooks with it, but the body keeps the score. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing, I say it's a hard read. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that hard read is it's hard to realize how much your body is holding mm -hmm. and that scar scorecard that your body has. Mm -hmm. But it is an amazing read to also realize mm -hmm. your body is holding and, and mm -hmm. things that we did. Like I, I remember after losing my husband, I wasn't a nice person yeah. and I thought I was, I didn't, I didn't think I was, a mess. Well, no, it takes it takes time because you're in that moment and you don't know what you're doing. Yes. And you need to come out of that event slowly, and then you can look back and say, "Oh my gosh." You yeah. Know? So some people have that easily. Yeah. yeah. Some people can just do that, and time mm -hmm. over time gets mm -hmm. you there. But mm -hmm. when you have trauma, it convolutes things. It yeah. complexes it and makes it harder. And so I was doing my thing and making that time. But mm -hmm. we were at seven years of losing my husband, and I wasn't making the progress that I thought I was because well, of my trauma. And that's a great segue to the next question I want to ask you, Terry, is how can a person, how can I recognize that I might need therapy? Because in my little weird world that I live in, it's pretty cool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I probably, well, we all have issues because I, I tell people the hardest thing you do in this life is to grow up in a family. Yep. And, and so what, how can I recognize if I need therapy? I mean, what are some signs? What are some signals I might be missing? Um, quick and mm -hmm. easy ones. I'm, I'm going to say, I think everybody should be in therapy. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to flat out make that statement. Mm -hmm. I think our world would benefit by everybody. And therapy mm -hmm. doesn't mean it has to be weekly. Mm -hmm. It could be once a month. It could be mm -hmm. couples coming in for check-ins and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, there actually is a statement that says that couples come into therapy. And I believe this with a lot of people. We go six years into therapy after we should have like mm -hmm. we finally will look mm -hmm. for a therapist when we should have been looking six years mm -hmm. sooner than what we did mm -hmm. and again i can't statistically give you what in regards to people but mm -hmm. we have a society norm where we go to therapy oftentimes mm -hmm. after or when we start to notice the headaches or we're mm -hmm. noticing we're more irritable with our kids or we're noticing mm -hmm. that we've been having depression or we've had depression for a long time yeah. or we notice that our anxiety is becoming unmanageable or mm -hmm. it's starting to affect our work when it gets out of hand is when we start to realize we need therapy. Mm -hmm. But I honestly mm -hmm. think that everybody would do really good of doing mm -hmm. an assessment with a therapist at least once a year, if not mm -hmm. twice a year, mm -hmm. to just get an assessment to find out how am I doing. Good idea. That, so That's the assessment idea. helps us decipher what's going on and diagnosis wise. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it also can help us decide if you need or would benefit from mm -hmm. coming in. Yeah. Um, in regards to that, it, it really is also about knowing you. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things we're going to talk about down the road is listening to your body. One of the mm -hmm. things that I've, one of the works in doing EMDR. So EMDR, what is that? Because we talked about it earlier. It's yeah. eye movement desensitization reprocessing. Mm -hmm. um, you can find it on mdria.org. So it's E-M-D-R-I-A.org. Mm -hmm. And if you typed in therapist search, I will come up there. I'm completely certified. Part of me wants to go grab my certification, bring it up, but I can't look. <laughs> yeah. I'm fully certified. I spend a lot of money staying well on top of my game. Mm -hmm. um, but in regards to that is that the therapy, the EMDR, is really becoming known for trauma, but it also moved forward into like anxiety and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so in regards to finding, I squirreled. I forgot what I was going with this. I went on to EMDR and I forgot what. Well, it's it's we're kind of defining it. Of, oh, that's and why it might it might be a good path for why? for some. To Thank follow. you. Yeah. I was like mm -hmm. I squirreled. <laughs> yeah. And my brain went over here. Um. And so in regards to that is sometimes knowing the right therapy that you need, but as you discover things about you and listening to your body, mm -hmm. your body has a way of communicating. And mindfulness, meditation can really help. Well, I was, I was going to say, we may not be a depressed person, but I think almost everyone knows what it feels like to be depressed. Yeah. When you, I mean, that's kind of a, a you know when you're an off. emotion that I think people can feel. That, yeah. And yeah. not, but, but let's counter that with not everybody, mm -hmm. because some mm -hmm. people can disassociate and oh. are, are in a state of numb, okay. where they're so disassociated from the emotions, they don't even know that they're having emotions. Okay. Or they haven't had them for so long because they've been so depressed. Mm -hmm. But this is the secondary part of what can happen is that mm -hmm. we can get so used to our world for so long that we don't realize we need that. I, I can see that and I agree with that. We just, we're like that frog in the in the boiling pot. We just get comfortable with, with where we're When it's turned, when it's, yeah. that cold water you go into and slowly yeah. it turns up that you get so comfortable yeah. by threw you in hot water. So if you mm -hmm. had a car accident, then you might think, and it was traumatic mm -hmm. where somebody passed or it was really mm -hmm. bloody and stuff like that. You'd be like, oh, I should go do some EMDR therapy if yeah. you know about it and things like that. Yeah. And so you, you can have events that be like, oh, this is a good thing. Or like if you end up getting a phone call, say 
CPS got called on you. They yeah. might say, hey, maybe your family would benefit from mm -hmm. some therapy. And another way is mm -hmm. just friends, friends telling yeah. friends. I think sometimes we oftentimes, we get the feeling that somebody's off until we think, especially kind of here in the, the, yeah. the Christian world of um, life is where we're like, take a, some cookies mm -hmm. instead of sitting down with somebody and going, hey, I noticed you're struggling. Yeah. Have you thought about therapy? Mm -hmm. Or or can I help you, you know, find it or look at a therapist or... Yeah. You know, those are the harder questions that I really that's, think we benefit. That's, that's good. The tuna noodle casserole is not always the answer, is it? It isn't. Yeah. And in truth, mm -hmm. it can actually make things worse. Like mm -hmm. for me, when my depression was getting bad, and still to this day, mm -hmm. when I know that I've got depression going on and it's unmanageable, my house gets unmanageable. Mm -hmm. Or I don't let people in. And it's my way of keeping people out because I'm something's going on in here. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you in to give me that tuna casserole. And I'm going to tell yeah. you I'm fine. I'm going to tell you I don't need it. Yeah, and that's, and that's the difficult part because the time when we need people most in our lives is we're pushing them away. We're pushing them away because yeah. of our stuff that's going on inside yeah. of us. Yeah, so hence, that's probably a red flag that you need some therapy or well, something, you know. exactly. And the other yeah. side is, again, if you've got, notice that depression going on, you've got anxiety mm -hmm. or you're struggling and your focus mm -hmm. is out of whack. Um, mm -hmm. One of the times, being, we're both widowed. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things we talk about is that widow I don't mean to smile. I'm just, I'm <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's, it's been a little it's while. Been we're good while. with it. <laughs> Our partners are up there yeah, just having a heyday. Having yeah, yeah. <laughs> but those are times when we think the old society would say just keep plugging. But mm -hmm. in truth, it can be beneficial to just have somebody talk to. Yeah. Um, again, one of the benefits to therapy, it's not the type of therapy that I specialize, but mm -hmm. in just meeting with somebody once a week mm -hmm. and just having it, especially in today's society where we mm -hmm. don't talk. We I, I, yeah. My phone. Oh. <laughs> we text. We we do everything, and so we miss this connection. Yeah. Well, and some of us that are members of certain religions, we may think, "Oh, let's, I'll just go to my pastor or my religious leader and and work out my problems." But you know, sometimes they're not always trained to to deal with this. I mean, you know, I just have to yeah. own that. Um, yeah. As you get to know me on this, um, mm. my face. Mm -hmm. doesn't lie tell stories yeah. and i have a hard time mm -hmm. um and i don't want to disrespect no, those positions that no. are very meaningful Hold on, I, need drink. I think they're they are there to guide you in the right direction and not fix your problem yes I think. Yeah. but i would encourage sometimes we go to a certain person expecting to get help for mm -hmm. our relationship mm -hmm. when in truth we need to go to a professional who's trained who's certified who is knowledgeable and this mm -hmm. is where i want to transition yeah, a little yeah, bit let's go um when you're looking for a therapist, I encourage you, ask, what are their certifications? What are they training on? Not just what are their certifications, but like one of the things that can happen is, I used to do this, I'd go to the Marriage and Family Conference, and I still go to it here in Utah, mm -hmm. but they will bring in different topics every year, and it's not a trauma specified, or an EMDR specified, mm -hmm. or a CBT specialized. There's a lot of different type of therapies, and when you're looking for a certain thing, you want to make sure the therapist that you have has that. Yeah. The thing I learned in paneling with insurance is I can tell you I can do any of them. <laughs> I just have to click a button, but yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm certified or I am the right, mm -hmm. not only the right fit, but that I have the qualifications for what you need. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate. I've had a lot of clients who've come to me after they've went to a bad EMDR um, experience because somebody went to a one day EMDR training. And I'm like, oh, it makes me nervous because I'm like, yeah. oh, no, no. I, I had to get my learner's permit. Mm -hmm. And then I had to get my experience, like before even getting my full license, I had to have another learner's permit before I was fully certified in EMDR. And mm -hmm. even on top of that, yeah. I spend, when I got certified in EMDR, I sent in over, I think it was 54 CEUs, when all I had to wow. do was submit 20. Wow. I spend every year, I spend and do, like last year with online, not as many, but I mm -hmm. did 18 mm -hmm. CEUs in EMDR alone. And also mm -hmm. I did another... 10 in IFS, which is internal family systems. Mm. And so I like the things that I practice are the things that I am spending my time mm -hmm. putting my money into it. And mm -hmm. the way I say this is find the therapist who's investing in themselves, mm -hmm. not just in everything, but who is specialized in what you're needing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to come at you. And, and the reason we're doing this is because I do, I have a lot of certifications. I have a lot of trainings. I'm trained in motivational interview and I'm trained and I went all the way to level three in Gottman's therapy. I've got the interventions and we're going to talk about them and things, not okay. today, but in, in these, um, yeah. in these videos and stuff. But I also have 
addiction treatment and certifications. I like I've got gauntlets of training, and so that's why I'm like I have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. But my specialty, as I've done work, is trauma. And again, mm -hmm. to answer some of that question of why trauma, yeah. I did couples therapy, and people's trauma got in the way, and so I stepped back from it because mm -hmm. I came to. Mm -hmm. Your trauma needed to be, and it, I just gravitate, my, not only in my mm -hmm. life gravitate towards trauma yeah. and my own and everything that I experienced, but as I worked with people in addiction and everything, so much stuff rooted mm -hmm. back to their traumas and their trauma's not getting taken care of. Mm -hmm. And when they don't get taken care of, they just bleed. They bleed yeah. out. And yeah. when you mix blood and water, mm -hmm. you're going to get bloody water. Yeah. It doesn't, like, it, it doesn't yeah. just disappear. So, Terry, with this, this specialty that, that we're, we're talking about, you see children to adults, right? Mm -hmm. Male, female. I have um, a play therapy mm -hmm. office. I've done some play therapy. I'm not yeah. certified in play therapy, but mm -hmm. I have done certifications. Um, well, mm -hmm. I've done some certification, but not fully certified with play therapy. Mm -hmm. And I've done CEUs. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites is Anna Gomez. She is an amazing MDR and child's therapist. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to get to train with Robbie Tapia. She's another great MDR therapist for children. Both have written several books and very well. So I've done some of their trainings. Um, Robbie Tapio is who did, I did my EMDR certification with, and mm -hmm. she was the motivator and was amazing. So I can't mm -hmm. can't thank her enough and for what she taught me and what she learned. Um, and so I, I gain children right now. I'm going to be honest. I mm -hmm. I'd say maybe a fifth of who I see right now are kids because right now mm -hmm. I work eight to two, mm -hmm. eight to one because my special needs kid needs me to be home. And so I work school mm -hmm. time hours Monday through Thursday. Mm -hmm. I'm a big person about self-care. Friday's my self-care and my mm -hmm. taking my day and stuff like that. And so I do children's. I do um, youth. I do teens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love my teens. Uh, my teens out there who are going to watch this, you guys are awesome mm -hmm. and amazing. But yeah. I also have a lot of college-age students, people who are mm -hmm. getting or, or transitioning into adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see as many older, not that I don't have trains with it, but it, mm -hmm. the geriatric population isn't something... I see a lot of, mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of that mid, mid adultness. Mm -hmm. Um, some people are retirement getting ready for retirement. Um, but not that eighties, nineties aren't, aren't quite mm -hmm. my, they're not, it's not that I can't work with them, but they're not the ones who call me yeah. as much, even though I really think they probably are the ones who should be calling. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, it's, uh, let's talk about that. I think, you know, you just touched on something as, as, as you get ready to retire, that's a big major life change. Yeah, and you transition. May, you know, what a great time to see a therapist. To, and as Terry was saying, it's it's like a mental checkup, just like I take my car in for its uh, service. Up, you know, yep. it's it's maintenance. And 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 I think Terry would be one to kind of guide you and set some goals and 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 some expectations as you're expecting a major life change, or maybe you just did expect a major life change, like. For example, we just lost our we lost our spouses, but you know if if you're in that um, if you're in that situation where you just lost a spouse, or you're going through a, a relationship change, or you're going into retirement, these are major life events or job losses. Job losses, yeah, uh, and and these are things.